everyone. I'm Dan Greshkin, director of a nonprofit education program called the Biodesign Challenge. BDC is building a community of collaboration across art, design, and biotechnology. We're creating the first generation of bio designers who are fluent in the languages of biotech and design, and we are engaging the public in a deeper conversation about technology's cultural implications. Ten years ago, before I started this program, I was a science journalist covering genetic engineering, and I had this question. I wanted to know what it would take to create a new kind of organism. The answer I found, I think, will change your notions about creativity in the 21st century. With a group of friends in my living room, I created this. These bacteria normally live in the gut and they're colorless. We added a gene from jellyfish. They now glow green. So what did it take? It took some basic reagents, it took a kitchen, and it took some custom-made DNA we ordered online. The lesson, biotech is not just for biologists anymore, it's for all of us. We're now 20 years into the biotech century, and people are bioengineering yeast to produce spider silk dresses. They're feeding microbes CO2 from smokestacks to grow biofuels, and they're using CRISPR to eradicate disease vectors. We've seen com computers change everything in our lives in the last 50 years. I think that biotech is gonna do so even more because we're talking about a technology that is life itself. So will it make our stuff more sustainable? I hope so. Uh, bi biology has solved that problem three billion years ago. Uh, will it create the next environmental crisis? I, I hope not. The truth <laughs> is that the question of what to do with biotech is not just a scientific one, but it's a societal one. So six years ago, I showed this slide on stage at MoMA, and I tried to imagine a table where stakeholders meet to create a vision for the science based on a shared set of principles. That vision evolved into the Biodesign Challenge, and here's how it works. Every academic year, we work in classrooms of high school and university students. We help instructors build curricula. We match students with artists, designers, and scientists. And then we ask them to imagine, create, and critique the future of biotech. At the end of the semester, each school picks the top teams to come to MoMA for our summit. There they compete on stage for our grand prize, the glass microbe before an audience of 400 guests and 50 judges. So let me show you some examples of projects. FIT won the 2016 competition with a knitwear from algae, throw the textile in the backyard, and it'll biodegrade. The team called Algenet started with almost no biology experience. Last year they raised $2.2 million in seed funding, and they now have a company of 10 employees. The winner from 2019 was a team from Bogota, Colombia. They created electricity-free refrigeration using Pseudomonas bacteria. Its protein freezes cold water upon contact, essentially making each one of those canisters an ice box. So the first application will be to trek temperature-sensitive vaccines into rural Colombia. The next application will be to completely supplant refrigerated trucks. So here's a more speculative project. Uh, scientists can already store digital data in DNA. The team from Sydney imagined storing the personal data of the recently passed away in the DNA of trees. So imagine their, their photos, their playlists, their letters. Imagine entering into a cemetery, only now it's a grove, and the memories of those who passed away live on in the plants. There's a certain poetry to these biodesign projects. It's not just science. Participation in BDC has multiplied five times over in the last five years. We've started in nine schools in the US. We now dot the globe. And students produce over 120 different visions each year. Alumni continue to win awards, funding, and exhibit in museums, galleries, and design shows and, and festivals. For a second, I just want to take a step back and ask you as an audience, what would you create if you had life at your fingertips as your painter's palette? So would you create a microbe? Would you create a plant? Would you create an entire, an entire biome? Or would it be something else completely? 
I invite you to explore your answer in our classrooms. Every year we're on the lookout for mentors for our students. Or if you're feeling generous, I invite you to fund us. <laughs> it costs us about $1,000 per student to run this program. And we're trying to raise half a million dollars to grow the, the organization by 30%. And lastly, I encourage you all to meet our students. I believe they will change the way that you see the relationship between the living world and technology. And ultimately, I think they'll change the way you think about life. They certainly have for me. Thank you very much. <laughs>